Jimmy K here, Metal Voice. Look at this. The Metal Voice shirts are now on sale. Just go to the video description to find out on how you can purchase one. Metal! Welcome to the Metal Voice. Today on the show, oh yes, here we go, all the way in Germany. I think, at least, I think you're in Germany. You're in Germany, Schmier? Yeah, I'm in Germany, of course. All yeah. right, all right. Germany. Maybe, maybe you're, you know, I don't know, maybe you went somewhere else in Europe. Like, maybe, you know. No, actually, at the German-Swiss border. So it's still Germany, but uh, Switzerland is just a, a um, couple of meters away from here. You got it. Today. Born to Thrash Live was released on May 8th, and the physical version is coming out July 17th. Plus, the shows are coming up. Very interesting. Shmir, first time on a Skype, it, or actually not a Zoom interview with me on uh, The Metal Voice. So tell me yeah. about this, uh, the new album. First, it's being digitally released, and after that, you're getting a physical copy. Tell me all about that. Yeah, basically, the album is very spontaneous. You know, we did it because of Corona. And uh, it was important that we can bring it out immediately, uh, which is what we did basically with the streaming release. And uh, the physical takes time, you know, it's up to three months or so to produce a, a, a vinyl nowadays. Yep. So that's why the album is coming out now in uh, actually four weeks from now on, like yeah. physically. Yeah. All right. And, and you're also playing in Switzerland, right? Yeah. One of the first social distancing i mean what does it look like is it like five people in a club like all far away from each other I have no idea. it's all <laughs> first one too you know <laughs> well it's actually uh, there's a security concept from from the government uh, uh, you can maximize a uh, maximum put 40 percent of the capacity of the club so this club we play holds uh, 1200 people yep. but they only allow uh, 300 so there will be enough space, basically. And uh, that it's all about this. Uh, Switzerland will, in the future, do bigger shows also, up to 500. Okay. But this is the first trial of, uh, of shows, see how it goes. They do it since, I think, two weeks already. The first shows are rolling. I think we're, we're the first international band that may be placed in Switzerland now. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, it's all fairy club also there. It's a great place. And it will be weird. We all know it's going to be... Uh, different but we have to start at one point and uh, it's also exciting at the same time so what are your feelings on okay i go on the internet and i see thousands of people protesting which is fine which is fine i don't i don't mind if people protesting for good reasons it's fine but then i see bands not playing i mean it's 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 hypocritical right it's you can't yeah, have one and can't have the other one you know, i also understand the need that uh, people need to protest and stuff uh, me too of course uh, like our whole uh, our whole industry is is on hold since uh, several months, and we can't do shit. And uh, you know, it's kind of of course feels feels wrong. You know, uh, it's also everybody been sitting home for three months now, and it feels wrong then that thousands go out there and might spread the virus again. You know, on the other hand, of course, also some experts are saying, hey, we we need uh, this immunity. Of of uh, of the masses also herd yeah herd immunity yes yes no so so how we call it in English herd immunity herd, herd immunity. immunity yeah exactly herd yeah herd immunity and uh, you know uh, some parts of of Italy they have already reached this uh, herd immunity mm -hmm. and uh, there the virus is completely worthless you know it's not hitting anymore there so I guess you know. It's maybe good that step by step, you know, yeah. we get there. And uh, at, at one point, the vaccine only is not the solution, you know, because, you know, to vaccine the world, first of all, it will take three years at least. And, and second, not everybody wants the vaccine. You know, I understand the, those people who don't want the vaccine, they don't have to take it. You know? So you think, I, I guess. Do you think the right measures were taking place, like everybody, or it should have been different now that we look back? I, you know, I'm not Nostradamus, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I think, you know, it's okay that we try to take care about the world. You know, we right, try yeah. to, this is the first time something that just extremely happens to the, in the modern world. So I understand we had to take some, some cautions. Uh, maybe to lock down for three months 
was a little long. Yeah. But on the other side, uh, if, if, if thousands and thousands would have been hospitalized, like it was in New York and some other cities, uh, all over the world at the same time, it would have been total chaos. You know? So yeah. I think uh, there was some sense in this. And I think some countries uh, made some better steps. Some other countries didn't react. You, know, you can also see now uh, a country like uh, um, Brazil having more problems because their president didn't want to go for the lockdown. You know? And yeah. also you see in a country like Sweden, who was the only country in Europe that didn't do the lockdown, they're having massive problems now uh, with a lot of uh, people dying at the moment. So I guess, you know, we will know later what was, would have been the best thing about this. But uh, I think, uh, you know, to be cautious was not the, the stupidest, uh, stupid thing. You know, of course, the, it's important now that our governments and the rich people are helping the world to come back. You know, this is a, a very important uh, uh, step for the future that you know we have to help each other now and uh, it, it can only happen when, when those who have a lot give a little bit more of what they have to the people who are poor you know that's that's the only concept that's going to work to bring the world back you know because the, the poorer countries and the poorer people in this world will suffer hardest from this. Do you find that because we're been you've been locked down a lot of bands are writing material now and writing albums and being inspired by the political <laughs> climate, right? I mean, there's a lot of that going on, like a lot of craziness in the world, a lot of inspiration to write new music. Do you find that now? You know what? I think I'm going to write a new album because of all of this. I'm actually always, I'm always inspired. I don't need uh, this bad uh, inspiration, actually. Uh, it's, it's uh, for me, it's rather like, um, at the moment, I'm, I'm not really, that inspired to write yet because we have been uh, writing an album just so, not so long ago. We were supposed to tour. We have a, a, a great album out. Uh, Born to, uh, to Perish, like, sorry. Born to Thrash is the to, album. Yeah. We, 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 will, we will start writing this summer because we, we're going to be bored because we're not going to have all those festivals this summer. So we, we're going to start writing. But uh, uh, I don't see us having an album next year, really. No. Because everybody's writing at the moment, everybody's writing albums, and there's going to be an overflow of Corona records next year. <laughs> who's going to buy all this music? You know, uh, people have no more money, so I don't know. What, but, what about uh, what about drive-ins? You've seen Doro, Doro Pesh. She, she did a drive-in oh, show. No, no, no. I'm not. I'm not playing for cars. You know, I'm, this is like it's wrong. It feels wrong. You know, if if this is the last step to do to play live shows in front of cars, I'm, I might think about it, but. At the moment, no way. You know, oh. it's not working for metal. Metal people have to move, and you know, you want to feel the bass. You know, this this auto uh, uh, this auto concerts. The music is on your radio, on your stereo, in your car. There's no yeah. PA system. Yeah. You know, there's no. It's not a live impression, really. You sit in your car, and you know, I understand people doing this now because people are desperate, but not for destruction. We had the offer to do this actually, but I don't want to rip my fans off with shit like this. I'm sorry. It's well, well what, what, if, what if a guy like, you know, the cars could like drive as you're playing, you know, maybe you could do some sort of, or people yeah. jumping out of cars. Who's going to pay for the accidents? <laughs> awesome. You know, like it's that's your true. fault. You know, that, that's a good point. <laughs> I mean, let's say bat, like you play now, right? And I just thought about this. You play your first show in Switzerland and it's coming up. Is there somebody gets sick, right? Yeah, it can happen, of course. Do, 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 does everybody have to write a paper saying, "Okay, I'm coming to this show, and if I get sick, it, it's not on. It's not on the band." I mean, is there um, something like that? I don't know. It's actually something that you have promoter? to ask the Swiss promoter and the Swiss authorities because yeah. they are uh, they having the first experiences now. Uh, I, 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 you know, I think everybody when and just the venue agrees uh, on on the on that they can't sue the venue because of getting corona of course everybody is, should be aware of when you go out in in people and when you go out with a, a certain mass of people that of course there is a possibility but in the end it's up to common sense you know when you keep distant to people and you go into a venue that holds 1200 people and you're only 300 people in the venue everybody has personal space 
you know. Yes. And, what, and when you go into the front and into the mosh pit, it's on your own risk. It's just common sense, I would say, you know. Yeah. So uh, I think that's why this concept is all right. And uh, I'm sure at the beginning, uh, there will be a certain distance also in the crowd. It's not going to be like a normal concert, I think. It's, it's going to take a little time this, con- this comes back. But that's okay. You know, I, I don't want people to, to stand tight and be uncomfortable. You know? we, that's why we have this concept. There, there is space. There's going to be space for people. If you, if you feel a little masks? bit weird about, How about masks? Show, How about masks? Of course, go on the back. You can, you can wear a mask, of course, exactly. And you can go on the back of the show. And still, you know, this place has a huge stage, has a big PA system. It's going to feel like a real show and you don't have to come so close, you know. So I think the, the possibility is there that people will feel comfortable and there might be some crazy moshers, but they know the risk. And, you know, and uh, if, you, if you go in the mosh pit, maybe wear a mask, you know, then I think the risk is very close to zero unless somebody coughs or vomits on you, you know. Yeah, throws up. Yeah, too much beer. Um... What about? Yeah, that's actually the biggest risk at the show. But people get drunk, you know. When they get drunk, they don't care anymore. It's true. It's true. And they start coughing all over each other. Um, thrash, exactly. an- <laughs> thrash anthems three. Are, are, oh, is there, are, are, would you ever consider doing a thrash anthems three? Uh, I don't. I don't know. I don't think we have the songs for it. We've been using. Like, out, uh, eh? We've been using all the classics on the first one. The second one has like the second row songs, basically. Uh, and I think there's not much left from the early days that are, uh, that are cool songs. I think, I don't know. And, you know, all the newer albums, uh, they sound good already. So I don't think we have to really re-record them or something. So I, I, would, I, I don't really see this to happen, but never say never, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. I, to me, I, I kind of enjoy those thrash and that, I mean... You know, back in the 80s, the sound wasn't the best. And that's why you did it, right? You did it because yeah, you wanted to... Yeah. Up. And yeah, the aggression is still there. Yeah, the, the, you know, when we recorded those uh, we recorded those albums, it was basically a demand from the fans. You know, we, we did a, a one... We covered ourselves, you know, on since yeah. the Comeback album, since 99. We always... We, first one, we covered uh, Curse of Gods. And then we did uh, Total Disaster and so on, Eternal Band. And the people really loved those bonus tracks. And then the fans, back in the day when we still had forums on our website, the fans in the forums started to ask, like, hey, why don't you do an album with all those re-recorded songs, you know? Yeah, yeah. And that's how, that's how Thrash Anthems 1 came together. And I know not everybody likes the re-recording, but a lot of fans like it, though. And uh, for us, it was a way to produce the albums in a, in a more, in the way that we have more control of, you know, uh, uh, back in the day, not all the recordings, as you said, were perfect. And now the band, of course, is more skilled and uh, we can play those songs how they're meant to be also, you know, and how we play them live also. So that's why the Thrash Anthems 2 made uh, sense for us also. Also to rediscover songs. You know, when you when you re-record songs, yeah. you dive really deep into the songs again, into the meaning, into the harmonies, into the lyrics also. You have to relearn everything from the song. and and uh, that helps you really to to uh, kind of play them also live again later in a in a good in a good manner and uh, yeah it brings you back you know and uh, I think what do you think about the lyrics today versus back then like when you wrote your yeah, lyrics I, I I had a funny time doing slash anthems too because I was singing Satan. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, it, it was funny. I uh, we, we were singing. Uh, we, had, we were making fun about it. Uh, but you know, those lyrics were at, when we were young. We were seventeen. We wrote those lyrics. We wanted to be evil. We wanted to break out of the routine and and uh, the conventional life. We were watching a lot of horror movies, and yeah, it was part of the concept of the band. You know, and of course, uh, I wouldn't write those lyrics again like this because now I'm an old fart. But when you're when you're a young musician, you know it was uh, you want to be young and wild, and yeah. uh, then of course uh, you write lyrics like this. So uh, I I I, d- I didn't feel like bad singing this stuff. It was just a little funny here and there because you know what about spirit, what, okay spirit okay of a seventeen year old is a different one than absolutely. Know, but but I look at like I look at the Mad Butcher and you know you look at these album covers. Would you release an album cover like you did? back in the day i mean it's so politically correct today right today everybody's yeah, don't talk about this don't talk not too much yeah, blood, yeah. you know 
Yeah, but we actually, we actually, you know, we did some covers like the release on Ag Agony cover actually. Uh, yes. From 88. Uh, was a shocker back in the day. Uh, it was. I remember when the album came came out on the Profile Records in America. Yeah. The yeah. label the label got a lot of calls from like parents, you know, uh, that felt like threatened and uh, they complained about the album cover art and stuff, you know. Uh, so back in the day, it was a shocker. Nowadays, the cover is like nothing, nothing evil. But but, we, but we inventor, kind of, yeah. Go ahead. The back in the day, back in the day was something crazy. But nowadays, it wouldn't be a shock anymore. So I think you know stuff changes also. But you're totally right. Uh, you know, in some points, uh, the political correctness of nowadays is, is kind of crazy too. And uh, you got to see uh, what you put on your cover. Otherwise, you're whatever. You know, it's it's easy to be nowadays not politically correct anymore. And I don't think uh, we're going into the right direction. I mean. Uh, uh, we, you know, live and let live, you know, and uh, uh, we're kind of uh, going in weird ways at the moment. Yeah. yeah. What about, uh, I, I know I, I asked Millie this, you know, the Teutonic Four, you know, the, the German Teutonic Big Four. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you've been asked this question so many times and, and there has been shows you guys play, but, but recently, in recent times, has there been any discussions? Yeah, we actually talked. Uh, lately and uh, I was I felt good about you know talking to those guys about it and making some plans and but then Corona came and yeah stuff became more difficult again so it doesn't look like it's gonna happen so 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 soon but uh, we've been talking so there's a, a real big demand from the fans so I really hope that uh, one day our ways will cross and we have the same time schedule and then we can do it because now we're all still fit, you know, we're doing great albums. We're, we're uh, yeah. all still out there and who knows in some years, you know, uh, we're all not getting younger. So I, I hopefully, hopefully we can do this soon. I mean, uh, in the end, it's up to the fans, you know, when the fans are demanding it, the other bands will also stay on it, you know. Uh, and I was the driving force uh, between this and the last years, uh, trying to get this together again. And uh, uh, at the moment, it's not up to me anymore. I tried my best, and it's up to the other guys. If the destruction is ready, we want to do it whenever. You know, if, if uh, Miller from Korea calls me tomorrow and says, let's go on the road, I'm, I'm ready. I pack my stuff on there, you know. Yeah. So I'm waiting for the call from the other guys. They know that Destruction wants to do it, and uh, hopefully the other guys will be ready too one day to do it again before it's too late. You know, Sodom and Tankard, I mean, they're, they're I don't know if they do this all the time. I don't know if they do it full-time musicians. Yeah, but I know they don't. They don't. Yeah, that's, that's one of the complications about it. They don't, yeah. yeah. Whereas, you know, Destruction and, uh, and uh, Creator, you know, these guys are full-time musicians. So it's a little, I guess it's a little challenging, right? Yeah, it's different because some of those guys have jobs. Yeah. And when they take so much holidays, they lose their jobs, you know. Yeah. Uh, and they, and they need their jobs to feed their families because uh, it's difficult. To, it's difficult to live on music, so that brings us into difficulties, you know. And that's why it's not so easy to plan all this. All right. So uh, what about uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, is there anything else uh, you'd like to talk about in regards to the live album? Um, no, actually, we touched all the topics. Uh, we, we wanted to come to the States this year, of course, again. Uh, we had a tour lined up in October, and uh, we actually postponed everything now to next year. Yeah. And uh, hopefully, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, we're planning on, on, on March, February, or March next year, depending on how the situation goes in America, of course, and depending on how, uh, I think, you know, the next weeks here in Europe will be very important ones to see how uh, live contests will go and how the virus will still be spreading after this. And uh, then we hopefully can make better plans for the future. But uh, I'm positive that we can come back to the States hopefully uh, next year. You're pretty, you're pretty much an honest guy when it comes to uh, social issues and politics, especially in your lyrics. What do you, how, yeah. how do you what do you make out of all this Seattle? You know the the takeover of uh, the you know that area in Seattle where the protesters are, and it, that's some good music right there. That's that's some good song inspiration yeah, right I, there. I actually have to tell you that you know now that this is going so crazy and the media is picking it up like crazy and there's like almost like a race war going on. I kind of switch off the news, you know, because 
it's too much negativity going on in the world at the moment. And uh, as much as I love to write lyrics about it, but uh, the last couple of months been tough, you know, been tough for us. We lost our jobs and, and there's been a lot of uh, weird vibes on the internet also. I don't know, you saw Facebook, you know, people were, you know, all these conspiracy theories and people going crazy. And I actually, at the moment, I also like to switch up the, the news sometimes and just don't hear all this bullshit going on, you know. And uh, uh, America has this problem going on at the moment. And I think America should solve this problem alone. And uh, the rest of the world is, is not involved, you know. I think uh, That's a good point. It's, important, it's, it's important that America solves their problems and we solve ours. And we have still Corona going on also. And... Uh, I really hope for peaceful solutions. You know, uh, it was never a solution to use a rifle, not even in the big wild west, you know, even if Americans yeah, yeah. Uh, like to use their guns. But I think we need peaceful uh, uh, solutions for all this. And uh, I think Corona times also made the world a little crazier. You know, people sitting home for three months or longer. Yeah. Uh, doesn't help, you know. So th let's hope some peace comes up and. Uh, you know, I, I always try to find a good good things into bad times. And I think hopefully also those complicated times will bring out uh, some positive stuff also. Do you think metal unites? Metal uh, unites metal always, music? I mean, for me, metal always unites. I, I, no matter where I go, you know, I, I play in Muslim countries. I play in countries where people are have different color. And I, I see my brothers and my sisters in the same way. I, there's no race war going on in my metal world, at least. And uh, I've been into most of the countries of this planet, you know. There's, uh, we've been touring so much in the last 20 years. And we played a lot of crazy places. And uh, what I see in between metal is a lot of unity. And no matter what color you are, you're a metalhead, you're a friend, you know. So, um, of course, there's idiots too in every scene. That's normal, I guess. But I, uh, at least the metal scene I know is, uh, is a cool one. And people are accepted of any kind. All right, on that note, Born to Thrash, live in Germany. Pick it up July 17th. You can even pick it up now digitally, right? And exactly, if you're... yeah, you can download it, you can stream it on all the portals. And people Already. around the world go to Switzerland. They're playing a show with Poltergeist. <laughs> Get on that That's plane, good. wear your mask. What's that? The problem is nobody, nobody can come to Switzerland except if you're European. So oh, don't okay. take the plane. Everybody America. stay home, only the Europeans go. <laughs> all right. Yeah, it's... Uh, at the moment, it's uh, European exclusive, but uh, that hopefully will change in the next week. All right, Shamir, thank you so time. much. Thank you so much for taking the time out. Everybody go check out, check them out live and buy the album. All right, thank you, sir. Uh, it was a pleasure. You got it.